call to order the regular council meeting for June the 3rd. Please stand for the opening statement. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. <coughs> have a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. A motion for the minutes of the special regular council meeting held on May the 13th. Motion to receive. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on May the 21st. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Minutes of the public hearing held on May the 21st. So. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, no delegations tonight. Bylaws. Bylaw number B1. Could I have someone make that recommendation? I would make the motion to receive uh, for um, third reading and adoption. Or third reading, sorry. Third reading. And adoption. It's on the thing. And adoption? Yeah. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, can I have a um, recommendation on B2? I'll make that recommendation for third reading and adoption. Second. Any discussion? I haven't seen none. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Committee reports. Um, Mayor Cutrell is not here. Any council reports? No? Administration reports? No? Okay, let's move right into discussion items. Nothing there, too. Correspondence. Any correspondence um, anyone would like to see pulled from C1 to C11? I would like to actually see one pulled. Can I have a motion to accept C2 to C11, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. C1. The reason I wanted, I just want, i um, got to bring it up here, I'm sorry. This is about a, um, an event that's going to be in Chat One Action on June the 7th from 12 to 1, and I just want everyone to be aware that it's there. I know I've seen it advertised, just so people can attend it, it'll be great. I think it's going to be good information given. It's um, a cumulative impact research consortium. They've been doing um, for three years now. They've been doing research on um, on environmental community and health values in Chetwin. So it'll be good for people to attend. And that was everything. So can I have a motion to receive C1? So moved. Second. All in favor? Carried. Information items. Can I have a motion to accept information items? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Carried. Reports for action. That's when I read this, right? So this portion of the regular council meeting is set aside to allow the public comments on the application for the Dura Cannabis Ventures Limited for a non-medical cannabis retail store license at 4728 52nd Street. This is not a formal public hearing process, but rather an informal process. I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their names and residence or business and then provide counsel with their comments. Please, up at the mic. I will now ask if there's any comments for the from the public on the application for Dar, Can Dar Cannabis Ventures Limited for the non-medical cannabis retail store license at 4728 52nd Street. Anyone have any comments? If you'd like to get up to the mic, please, and 
state your name and address. Kevin, can we make sure that's on? It is on. Hello. My name is Sarah Haynes. I'm a resident of Lone Prairie, 610 Tower Creek Road. I am a social worker in the community for the past nine years. I'm a mother of some young children. An enthusiastic community member. Chetwin is my home and the community that I love to work and play in. First, I'd like to start off by saying my comments that follow are not reflective of an opinion in opposition of a cannabis retail store, as I do feel it is important for our community to provide a variety of services and products to meet the needs of local residents. As there are two liquor retail stores in town, there is no reason why a cannabis retail store cannot be located within space in our community. I would like to share some information for the parties to consider regarding the proposed location of the cannabis retail store at 4728 52nd Street. As visible in the BC Land Surveyor's Certificate of Location, the proposed location is within three lots of the Local Service BC office. The Local Service BC office is a shared work site comprised of the government agent, the Ministry of Transportation, and the Ministry of Children and Family Development, MCFD. Within the Service BC office, Staff within MCFD providing services in the areas of child protection, child and youth with special needs, child and youth mental health, and youth probation all occupy offices within windows overlooking the Pomeroy Hotel parking lot. The family meeting room used by all areas also overlooks that space. The Pomeroy Hotel parking lot occupies two of the lots beside the proposed location. Given the current health and fitness building footprint, <coughs> This means that families and children accessing support will be conducting their counseling sessions and appointments while looking at the cannabis retail store. The Pomeroy Hotel parking lot is used for overflow parking predominantly. It is consistently vacant between the daytime hours and more specifically between the hours of 11 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., which is the two where the two businesses would overlap in terms of business, business hours. Service BC is open until 4.30. The proposed cannabis retail store will open at 11 a.m. <clears throat> Many of the families and youth accessing support services are affected by problematic <clears throat> substance use. By substance, I am referring to alcohol as well as legal and illegal drugs and misuse of prescription medication. Cannabis would fall under that definition. Furthermore, driver's examination services are also provided at the Service BC office within the Pomeroy Hotel parking lot, often serving as the start and end location for exams. That means every young person obtaining their first driver's license would now do so right beside a cannabis retail store. Just over one third of motor vehicle deaths in BC involved drugs or alcohol between 2008 and 2016. More than half of those deaths are between the ages of 19 and 39 in BC involved alcohol, drugs, or both. I share these stats only to emphasize the fact that in Chetwin, it would become a one-stop shopping opportunity for an individual to pay off impaired driving fines, obtain their driver's license, and purchase cannabis. If the message is to be that driving and substances do not mix, then the message would not be consistent in our small community. Of consideration is also the fact that the location of the cannabis retail store is also on a bus route for rural Chetwin attending Don Titus Elementary, as well as within the immediate vicinity of private residences and a questionable park a little bit further down. <laughs> um, there's only on-street parking spaces available in that area already, um, some of which are in front of private residences. Perhaps the proposed parking plan provided by Ms. Newsom in her response to Ernest Fanner would address potential parking congestion, but during times of heavy snow, there's already snow removal issues in that area. I bring up the concerns knowing that the uh, applicant, business owner, may have already considered solutions to these problems. Here are some solutions which council or the applicant may also wish to consider. Discrete advertising of the product visible from outside the building. Two, safety and privacy measures for the property, including fencing, would also eliminate visibility from the windows overlooking the parking lot. Messaging to patrons that cannabis use is prohibited on the property, any businesses surrounding the property, and any public spaces where children may be located or is otherwise stipulated in the Cannabis Control and Licensing Act. <clears throat> I call on Chetwin Council to ensure local bylaws are updated to reflect the Cannabis Control and Licensing Act, also considering prohibition of use anywhere that already um, dictates there be no consumption of alcohol or smoking of cigarettes, 
and also looking at updating the parks and public places a re uh, regulation bylaw if it has not already been done. Also to ensure bylaw enforcement officers and community policing presence in areas surrounding a cannibal cannabis retail store or anywhere that sells cannabis paraphernalia, specifically during events where use of the product is at a higher likelihood in that vicinity, such as April 20th every year. If none of these measures or any other suggested measures are found to be sufficient to ensure the safety and health of children in our community, then I encourage the Chetwin Council to choose to support applications for a cannabis retail store in the downtown core area where similar products are already sold in Chetwin. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Anybody else wish to speak to this? No. Anyone else wish to speak to this? Please get up and state your name and address, please. April Barnettson. I spoke with you guys all last week about um, compliance and, and um, um, location, et cetera. Um, this young lady here pretty much said everything that I was going to say, um, as well as, um, yeah, and, and uh, I do also realize that I am, because I, I had mentioned that Mr. Durr was within meterage, I also, with my store, am within that 800 allowable that is recommended. Um, but when I was applying for my license, I was told that I would only be able to do business on three streets of the downtown core of Chuckman, which was the main drag, 50th Street, 50th Avenue, and where I'm located now, 49th Avenue. So I, I, I do object to where he's also located. I also object to where he's, his location and compliance. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak at this time? Is there an issue? Should we just continue on? Or? If anybody, if everybody is done speaking, then we can just close up and give the opportunity and move on. Do I have to read like three times? No, just so you close. Okay. Is there any other further comments about this application that anybody wants to say before we continue? Sure, if you would like to get up and... Stand. I received a call earlier today about... Uh, my name is uh, Constable Lennon Cruz. I'm with the chat when RCMP. I received a call from Diane. Is she in present here? Okay. Yeah, thank you. So. Uh, it was requested that I speak on behalf of uh, the Chetwin RCP detachment to share about what the DARE program is. And uh, I believe there's a sign uh, within the vicinity of where the, the, the shop is going to be. And I wish it which shares this is a DARE-free dare uh, zone and a drug-free a drug zone. So the mixed messaging that, 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 that would, that, that would uh, send in regards to um, the DARE program and uh, putting a cannabis um, dispensary within that sign. So uh, my recommendation was that the sign can be taken down, it can be moved closer to the school. Um, I know that their program is a 10 week uh, educational program that focuses on um, making healthy choices and uh, responsible choices for kids in grade five. Here in Chetwin, we present that program. Uh, this, 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 uh, this school year was presented to uh, Windrum Elementary and um, and again, due, due to resources, uh, that was the only school that I was presented to. I know um, other schools in the district have chosen not to have the, the, the program presented, and uh, Little Prairie is one of those schools. All the other schools encourage the program and, um, and want that program presented to their grade five classes. So it's a 10-week it's a program, and, it, and again, it talks about um, the use of uh, Resistance, building resistance to drug and alcohol and other and other other drugs in in, um, in the community, and we find it's just an effective way to communicate. And as a police officer coming into the classroom with grade fives, it's kind of exciting time, and it becomes a, a very important program that we believe. I know the RCMP have 
have, uh, are moving away from the program it, itself. So um, um, we're looking at other programs and, and other presentations that we would give uh, instead of the DARE program. But uh, in, in chat, when we have two trained officers, Constable, myself, Constable Cruz, and um, Corporal Leanne, uh, sorry, Joanne Rubenthal. And we've been uh, presenting the DARE program in, our, in this community, so. Um, but the sign itself, I mean, there is a, I find that being a block away from a, from a school, I find that a bit too, uh, um, the question that was asked to me as a police officer, is there, is there uh, more charges that are more uh, um, heavier if you're, near, if you're dealing near, near, uh, in a school under the Controlled Drug Substances Act? Yeah, you would be charged um, more heavily with a, a higher verdict if you are seen within the school and you are dealing within the school, and you're particularly dealing with students or dealing to students. Um, so that would have a higher uh, threshold. Uh, the cannabis, again, it falls under the Cannabis Act and it would be regulations within the Cannabis Act that you can't be obviously providing drugs or cannabis in, um, in, in the school or near schools and that would have, uh, there would be um, higher jeopardy there for, for doing that as well. It won't fall under the criminal matter, it will fall under the Provincial Act, which is the Cannabis Act regulator. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Is there any other further comments from anybody? Hearing no further comments, I declare this public process concluded. So, RA1, we're going to move right into it. Can I have that recommendation, please? I would make that motion that Council support the application from Dur Cannabis Ventures Limited for a retail cannabis establishment at 4728 52nd Street. Second. Um, any conversations? Yes, there's been, there's been recommendations by some of the audience and um, obviously some con concerns brought up. How, how do we address those at this point? Well, uh, I know one of the concerns that we did address was the parking. Yep. Um, that has been addressed. There's parking in behind the building that they've taken care of. Um, as far as the rest for, of them? For example, uh, fencing, like, would there be... I guess the, the, the question would be what type of fencing would we like to see there in order to have the, the, the view blocked off from the uh, uh, government building? Well, from what I understand, there's no advertising allowed on the building or around the building, so you're not even going to know what the building is. That's what I understand. Am I, am I right in that? I don't think so because the one in Pooskoopy is quite obvious. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Step, please. Yeah. I think they have a, a concept of a sign included in their package here, so you can see what it looks like. In. Oh, here it is. And that's in the package that was given to Yes. In the, yeah. yeah, it's part of the facade grant application. Mm. So, I didn't see it in the application, is it? Yeah. It's oh, in it's in facade it's, in, it's in the facade yeah. program. Okay. So it's part of it's the law that you can't display the product in the windows or uh, any kind of representation of the product in the windows, and you can't advertise to. Uh, audiences that are um, less than 80% adult. So um, that's what the province has dictated. However, if council wanted maybe landscape screening or that sort of thing, you could definitely make that a condition of the application. Can you guys hear us? Like, are these mics even working? No, I, don't know. I think there's too many on. Okay, well, I don't have mine on. Okay, go ahead, so Carol. Go can you continue? Turn this through. Okay, so I was saying that you could. Is that any better? Okay. Yeah. You could ask for a landscaping type of screening. Um, as you mentioned, I don't know if the fencing would really do anything because people are just going to be walking in and out of the building. It's not as though they're going to be, you know, displaying what they've purchased because that's 
the purchase has to be in a package, for one thing, and it's illegal to consume the product in the store or on the sidewalks, which would be an RCMP matter to enforce, or in vehicles. So does that answer? Okay. Was there more that you had? No, I'm just wondering if we're, if we're going to be making a decision on who should, and if we're going to, one way or the other, we should be, at this point, is this one we, we, we put any add-ons in? Yes. Yep. Yeah, well, if, we're, if, if the vote goes the way, we, if the vote goes the way that the applicant asks, I think at this time we should ask for some um, screening there of, of some sort for with the trees or fence or whatever. Okay, so what, as tall as a building? Like, uh, no, uh, what's, what's, we, what's our, we have a, we have a code that uh, where like, we have to go, where you can go so high, I think it's six feet or something like that. Uh, Council Galbraith? Maybe we should check with our official community plan to see what that says, because that, I think, will indicate what you have to have for a barrier. Is that correct, Carol? It would be the zoning bylaw. I'm just looking at it right now. Go ahead, Councilor. Okay, so I just want to make a comment. I actually had a, a visit to the uh, Weed Mart in Bruce Coopie and, and spoke to the owners and um, took a tour of the store. And actually, it was, it was very well done, clean and tidy, wasn't smelly, everything was concealed, and there was no like paraphernalia hanging out, and all the marijuana was in its um, enclosed cases. And uh, so that, that didn't concern me at all. And um, I had a good conversation about the clientele that they. Uh, you know, visit and um, professionals to the average person. And they had concerns about um, the people that use drugs often visiting. And he said they can still buy it on the street cheaper and it's not a concern. And you don't have them hanging out in the neighborhood. They don't stop to have a smoke a joint while they're leaving the store. They get in their vehicle and they just drive away. So it's not like a congre they, they don't congregate. The windows are all um, mirrored out or uh, smoke screened out or whatever. So you can't see in and um, they're heavily regulated and uh, I, I don't have any concerns. And as far as visual, um, their, their building doesn't look any different than anybody else's. Uh, they have their sign on the front, Weed Mart. Uh, they're within, um, they're, they're actually fairly close to their elementary school, just across the back alley in a, in a half a field, and uh, ample parking. Um, and in regards to some of the comments that Mel was making, or the concerns from the public, as you know, getting your driver's license and having to drive by a cannabis store, it's to me no different than parking in front of the liquor store when you're asked to parallel park. So I mean, it's just one of those things. Anyway, that's my two bits. Thank you. Any other comments, Clay? Uh, this property was currently zoned C2 at the, right now, which is uh, what it needs to be, right? C1. C1, sorry. Yeah, yeah so that's it's, it, so, um, yeah, I, I do appreciate the comments about the bylaws and enforcement, and uh, when you're talking about Chetwin, if we have a, a smoking bylaw, whether it be cigarettes or cannabis or, or drinking, um, I know we aren't as, as heavily regulated as some communities, maybe that needs to be revisited, but. I know this is the only type of retail store that we actually have to give approval on every time one comes up, and I wish we didn't. I, I didn't like that about the provincial regulations. I think if something meets the zoning requirements, um, we shouldn't have to, to visit it. But we did make a conscious decision as council last year that uh, cannabis would be um, allowed in C1 zoning, and I see no reason to vote against this one if, if that's what it's already zoned in. Um, and as far as the advertising and, and the way that the shop is, needs to look, uh, that is covered provincially under this BC Cannabis Private Retail Licensing Guide. And I think that there's still a lot of controversy out there whether cannabis should be legal or not. And I don't think it should be. I didn't want it to be legal, but that's not what we're discussing here right now. We're discussing bylaws and zoning, and that's really as far as our scope goes, unfortunately. Thank you. Anyone else? 
just to what Mel was saying, um, looking at the pictures of the building right now, and if they are in compliance <coughs> with what the province is saying, Sarah's office would look at pretty much a blank wall. There would be no, no flashing marijuana sign on it, no, no store name. So they're really, I mean, other than for, to make it look pretty, do you need to have a fence? Councillor Disher? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Ward? And I agree with that. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that it looks, it appears from the application that Mr. Durr is going to make this building look new again. And I don't know that we would need to ask him to, you know, spend more money and, uh, you know, with screening or any more landscaping as it's not required. Did you find what you were looking for in the bylaws? I couldn't find in the zoning bylaw where it specifically mentions commercial businesses and fencing. I'll just ask our director of engineering public works, are you aware of any fencing um, criteria for C1? No, I've talked about it. No. Any more comments from council? Okay, then I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Not seeing any. Carried. RA2, the um, SOD Improvement Program Grant Application. I'll make that recommendation that Council authorize issuance of development permit number 02 2019 to permit facade, facade improvements to the existing structure at the property of 4728 52nd street northwest and that council authorize that business <coughs> facade improvement program grant application and partnership agreement for dur cannabis ventures limited located at 4728 52nd street northwest chatwin bc second any comments all the question all in favor opposed carried so the ratification of email um, poll for the Chetland Rodeo grant request I'll make that recommendation that council ratify the email poll of May 27 2019 to award a $1,000 grant in aid to the Chetland Rodeo Committee for its June 1st to June 2nd 2019 rodeo event Any discussion? Go ahead. I, first of all, for the record, do not disagree with the rodeo or the hockey tournament or any of those that have come to ask us for grants. However, the eligi eligibility criteria to me hasn't been followed. And I'd like to know, should we amend the criteria or what do we do? Can you just tell us where you where it hasn't been followed? Okay, so all grant applications for more than $1,000 must be accompanied by a copy of the most recent financial statements of the applica applicant organization. And L, grant requests of more than $1,000 are restricted to registered nonprofit societies or not-for-profit organizations. Okay, from what I understand though, they asked for 1000 so it wasn't over? Okay. It was up to a thousand. Okay. And we've also um, said that advertisements will be placed or have been placed on the district's website July of each year giving notice and is accepting applications for grants up to September 30th so as we can plan for these things. I agree. This was a one off. Um, well, so was the hockey. And so was the hockey. It was a two off. And, and we will have, I, and I do agree that we do have them one offs. And, Unfortunately, some organizations can't see what they have coming, so they don't know, right? I, I think we will always have them one-offs. Okay. Um, but I do think that in the future we do have um, one a meeting that's going to be coming up where we are going to discuss our our um, community, okay. pardon me? Our grant policy. Yeah, our grant policy. Thank you. I like having you sit beside me. <laughs> <laughs> our grant policy, so in the future, so we can hash it down. 
So any other questions or comments on this? I just have a comment that I, uh, I, I still don't support this. It's not that I don't support the rodeo. I just don't support um, giving out a thousand bucks every time somebody asks for it. And I think we really need to tighten our belts. Uh, we're asking the taxpayers for more money so we can turn around and give it away. And I think we need to start letting the citizens decide if they want to support these events with their tax dollars, not us. So that's my opinion. Any other comments? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, carried. Reports for information, nothing. New business, nothing. Public question period. Any questions from the public? Go ahead, Sarah. Yes, please, if you like. Yep. Noticed that it was mentioned that you guys would be looking into updating your bylaws. I'm wondering when you guys are going to do that. The bylaws about that the grants specifically apply to cannabis use in the community. When are you guys going to be reviewing that and how you go about doing it? I don't know of any review that's coming. I know you no. mentioned something about bylaws. Yeah. 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 Did you mention something in there when you were talking about? I'm sorry, we're a little confused up here. We're not sure what you're talking about. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, we're a little confused. We're not sure what you mean. So have you guys reviewed the bylaws specifically as they apply to cannabis? And will you be doing that in the future if you have not done so? Well, we have discussed it. We've set the bylaw to be able to only be in C1. I mean pertaining to parks and public spaces. Because as it stands, alcohol is prohibited, but on, that's the only item that's prohibited in parks. When will be you be reviewing that? Go ahead, Carol. Um, actually, use of cannabis is also pretty prohibited in all public spaces, so it's already prohibit, prohibited. But that's under the Act. I'm wondering when this town is going to review their bylaws as it applies to that. That does apply to the bylaw, correct? It's, a, it's already prohibited, so it's an enforcement matter. If somebody is partaking of cannabis in a public space or a park or uh, a public sidewalk, it's already prohibited. So some municipalities in the province of BC are ensuring their bylaws reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And I'm I've sorry. never seen an enforcement officer at a community event, so I'm just wondering if there'll be steps to ensure that that's happening. That would be a. I, I believe matter, that's an RCMP matter, and I and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that would be that would be an RCMP matter. Um, they would want be the one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you would be the one that was enforcing any or cannabis laws in parks, sidewalk smokers, things like that. Would that be RCMP? Yes, yeah, so it would be the same way we handle liquor infractions. We're trying to handle cannabis not an enforcement issue because somebody just said that it was an enforcement issue so it's an RCMP issue not bylaw RCMP enforcement yeah okay yeah law enforcement any other questions having here none uh, motion to adjourn second awesome Thank you.